In part 1, we discussed how a crippling plague prompted the end of the Ming Dynasty in China, leading to the finale, when Qing soldiers and Li Zicheng rebels overtook the capital and ended the dynasty's reign. But the question remained, did the plague infect Wu Sangui's Guanyin cavalry? In the final battle on May 26, 1644, Li Zicheng's army of 200,000 soldiers attacked the Shanghai Pass and fought against Wu Sangui's Guanyin cavalry. But although Wu's army fought an enemy four times its size, they were able to hold off Li's front until the 28th when Qing reinforcements finally arrived. Seen from this, it's clear Wu's army wasn't inhibited by the plague and likely wasn't touched by it either. Records also show that as the plague rattled the last 12 years of the Ming Dynasty, it hit the capital the hardest, exactly where Wu's military supply was sourced. So how then did the plague miss Wu Guanyin's cavalry? To know why, we have to understand the Ming Dynasty before the plague. Plagues and prisons. These were the two defining characteristics of Ming's history. For plagues, there were many, especially in the late period. And during the dynasty's 277 years, over 330 epidemics occurred throughout 168 of those years. In regards to prisons, censorship was also carried out by omnipresent spy agencies who followed the eunuch's orders to monitor and persecute courtiers. They governed the country with terror, tortured the victims, and established many unjust prisons as a result. Many therefore believe the two characteristics were linked. In other words, the Ming Dynasty's injustice was one of the root causes of the constant plagues. That's why in his astrological work, Yi Si Ran, Li Chengfeng, a well-known Chinese scholar, often advised one to resolve natural disasters with atonement, since he claimed that some natural disasters are triggered by injustice in the human world. But while natural and man-made disasters have always existed throughout history, modern academic circles agree that none of them were able to cause the local plagues at every turn the Ming Dynasty had. So if the social injustice incited the plague, why didn't disaster only aim at those responsible for the injustice, such as the spy organizations? Because the spies weren't the only ones inciting injustice. Yuan Chong Huan Remember the cavalry? Well, Wu's Guanyin's cavalry was actually first established by Yuan Chonghuan, and soon his cavalry became the strongest force in the late Ming Dynasty. They defended their country seen in the Battle of Ningyuan in February 1626, when they guarded a city with about 10,000 people from heavy cannon attacks fired by Ne Hatsi's army of 130,000. Or in the following year, when Yuan led his cavalry to fight off a 24-day back-to-back -back attack by Hong Taiji's army of 60,000. Although this man was a scholar, he was able to train the most powerful cavalry in the world and defeat the Manchurians, a tribe of northern invaders known to be skilled in cavalry field battles over five times. When the fate was sealed, this leads us to arguably the largest injustice in the Ming Dynasty. When Yuan Chonghua, the first loyal defender of the Ming Dynasty, was accused of treason by Emperor Chongzhen, he was then imprisoned, concocted, and sentenced to the cruelest sentence of the dynasty. Worst of all, the majority of the general public, especially the people in Beijing, also believed the emperor's decree. As they denounced Yuan and scolded him as a traitor, Yuan's misery became unprecedented. When Yuan died after three days of torture, his executor cut and sold his flesh. And as historical records reveal, the general public who believed the court's lies furthered Yuan's torture by buying up and mincing his flesh and internal organs. Their actions would ultimately decide the Ming Dynasty's fate, a deadly plague that inflicted a torturous death on all who participated. A heavenly principle. It is therefore commonly believed that the Manchurian army, Li Zicheng's rebel army, and Wu Sangui's Guanyin cavalry of the Ming Dynasty were all spared from the disease in order to carry out Heaven's wish to end the Ming Dynasty, a fate that was sealed after Yuan Chonghuan's death. But based on this, many still question it, asking why hasn't there been a large epidemic every time there was a significant injustice or killing throughout history? The answer lies in the people. Looking at earlier dynasties, Han Xin and Yue Fei, two of China's heroes, were unjustly killed as well. However, the people and officials at those times knew the deaths were unjust, and as a result, no plague was needed to punish the people of those dynasties. 
Yet in the wrongful killing of Yuan Chongquan, a considerable portion of the people and officials believed in the emperor's lies and supported Yuan's death. This is a case of what Chinese culture calls common karma, as since the karma was created jointly, the punishment will be shared jointly as well. This is the root of the epidemic that wiped out the Ming Dynasty, and this is the retribution to all those who violate the laws of nature.